Hey gang and welcome to your very first progressive web app tutorial. Okay then my friends, so have you ever wanted to create a mobile app? If you have, then you probably already know that mobile app development is a really daunting environment to navigate when you first start out. And it's going to pose all different kinds of questions like what programming language should you use to create the app? Or how do you get your app working on all devices? Android devices and iOS devices? And then should you use a framework to create the app? And if so, which framework do you use? And then finally, once you've created the application, how then do you take it and publish it to the relevant app stores? Now, all of these different questions are enough to put you off app development completely because sometimes it's really, really hard to even know where to start. It would be loads simpler if we could just create a mobile app with vanilla JavaScript that runs inside the browser, just like a normal website does, but which could also harness the power of native device features so that when we run that web app on a mobile, it could do things that a native app could do as well, like be installed onto the home screen of the mobile. Or maybe we could access that application when we're offline, much like we can with a regular native app on a phone, or even get push notifications from this app. And now we can. The web has moved on a massive, massive deal over the last few years since app development first boomed onto the scene. And now modern browsers come with the power to do all of this stuff. So now we can just use regular HTML, CSS and vanilla JavaScript to create mobile apps that are going to run in a browser just like a website does, but that also have access to mobile device features. And they have this app like feel about them. And these are what are known as progressive web apps. They're essentially web apps that run in the browser using web technologies, but they behave and feel very much like a native mobile application with access to all these different device features. So now my friends, you do not have to learn a new programming language, a new framework, or figure out how to add your app to the app store to create a mobile app like experience. All you need now is this knowledge of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for the web. So let's just for a minute now compare progressive web apps, PWAs, to native apps. Now, when we create a native application, these can be made with frameworks like React Native, or we could use device-specific SDKs. Now, native apps can be published to the App Store and then downloaded from the App Store if a user wants to use them. They can be installed onto the mobile home screen so that we can just open them with a click. And the app runs on the device itself with access to all the device features. It can be used offline with limited capabilities. And it can also use app push notifications to send messages to the user. Now, if we compare this to PWAs or progressive web apps, much of the functionality is the same. Now, PWAs, instead of being made with device specific SDKs or frameworks, these can be made using vanilla JavaScript HTML and CSS, just like we'd make a regular website with. They can be accessed this time via web addresses and not the app store. And they can also be installed onto the mobile home screen with an icon so that we can just open them with a click. Now, progressive web apps run in the browser, but they also have access to device features. They can also be used offline with the help of service workers. And we can also use web push notifications to send messages to the user. So you can see that we can do an awful lot with PWAs that we used to only be able to achieve by making native apps. And the end result of creating a PWA is that we have a web app that runs on a mobile to provide a very app-like experience. However, PWAs are still pretty new and they rely on new and emerging technology. And that means that we just have to watch out for a few things. First of all, there could be changes to the specifications and support is not yet completely widespread in all browsers. But hopefully as time goes on, those kinks are all gonna be ironed out. Now for this course, I'd recommend using a good modern browser like Google Chrome, which does support a lot of features. And that is what I'm gonna be using. So in this course, we're gonna be making a PWA from start to finish using HTML, CSS, JavaScript and also Firebase to serve as a backend and a database as well. And in the end, it's going to look something like this. It's called Food Ninja and we can add new recipes. We can also delete recipes as well as access other pages as well. Now, 
this course is not going to be covering absolutely everything that makes up a PWA because that would take about 150 videos or more and I've got other courses to create. But I will be showing you how to create this basic PWA that we'll be able to host online. We can install it on our phone home screen. We're going to be able to use the app without an internet connection using service workers. We're also going to be using offline data persistence with a Firestore database as well. So there's going to be loads to do. And in the future, I'll also do another separate playlist about Firebase messaging and push notifications. Now, this is not a playlist for people who are complete beginners to JavaScript. I'd recommend that before you start, you have at least a decent grounding in it. You don't need to be a ninja in JavaScript, but you do need to understand things like asynchronous code and promises, and probably also a little bit about Firebase Firestore as well. Now, if you want a good grounding in JavaScript first, then I do have a modern JavaScript from Novice to Ninja course on Udemy, which you can get for $9.99 using the link below. And that's going to teach you loads about JavaScript from beginner to ninja level. So then you'll be well prepped to take this course. It's also going to include stuff about Firebase as well. Now, if you already have a good grounding in JavaScript and just want to learn about Firebase Firestore, then I do have a free playlist on this YouTube channel all about Firebase Firestore, which you can check out. And the link to that is going to be down below. Now, I'm also going to be providing you with all of the course files for this playlist, and you can find them on this repo right here on GitHub, PWA Tutorial. The link is going to be down below. Now, each lesson is going to have its own branch in this repo. So if you want to see the code for lesson 15, for example, select lesson 15 from the branch drop down and you're going to be able to see all of this code right here. You could also clone or download the repo by clicking this button and downloading the zip right here. OK, so. That is your introduction to PWAs. I really hope you enjoy this series. And if you do, my friends, please don't forget to share, subscribe and like. And I'm going to see you in the very next lesson.